Okay. And then the next thing is to find me and spotlight me so you can see what's going on. So the first fly today is a Dave's Hover. And as I said in the post, it's not named after me. It's named after Dave Whitlock, uh, who is a fairly famous fly tire. And he, one of the things he's famous for is his ability to handle and manage deer hair. So there's a little bit of deer hair on here. It, it, he, he, his patterns tend to be a little on the complicated side too. So this will take a little while. Um, the hook is uh, I'm using is a Hanuk. It's backwards here, but of course, but it's a uh, streamer wave. It's a number six. And I'm using that number six uh, streamer wave because it's a, it's a fairly robust hook and it's a little easier for you to see what I'm doing when I'm going through the tying process. Most of the time though, if I'm gonna tie these for normal process, this is uses a, a Mustad 9671, which is a uh, two X long streamer hook that Mustad makes. It's got a bit of a down eye, which makes it a little tougher tying than the deer hair head, but uh, it's a little lighter wire hook. So it probably floats better than the one I'm using here. Um, thread is, uh, Three out tan. Uh, if you really want to get a really nice flare on your deer hair, you might want to use Kevlar, but this, this is a fairly strong thread. So I'm going to start right behind the eye. And I'm going to run that in touching turns all the way down the shank because I don't want the bare shank for my next step. Um, and the next step is to create a little more bulk in the body, particularly widthwise, uh, what the Whitlock pattern does is it uses from, I'd say about two thirds of the, the way from the eye of the hook to the bend of the hook. It uses a piece of heavy monofilament tied on either side of the hook shank. Now, the way he showed it in his out uh, thing, he, he would double it over and tie it on like that. But I found that created a bit of a bump where I was going to tie the deer hair in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tie a single strand on the side of the hook facing me. And I want it on the side. And I'm going to wrap that down, right down to the bend on the near side. And I'm going to take my scissors and clip it off tight. And then I'm going to take a piece of the same monofilament and I'm going to bring my thread back up to the front. And I'm going to tie it on the this one on the far side of the hook. And I can adjust it so it's at exactly the same tie in point. I'm going to run that down the hook shank all the way to the bend exactly where I left the other one. I'm gonna trim that off snug. And I'm just gonna build a little bit of a transition in behind where that mono is uh, tied off just to take the big bump out and uh, make a little ramp up to the, to the monofilament. And what you can see now is that 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 hook shank is a little wider than it was before because of the mono. Now at this point, I'm gonna tie in the tail. I'm gonna use my small hair stacker. And uh, this one uh, used to belong to Roman Sherbin, who is the guy that invented the fly that uh, is going to be tied by Florin next. And I picked that up at his estate sale when he passed away many years ago. So it's, it's, it's a nice little stacker, but it's as much as anything, it reminds me of Roman and how, what a good friend he was to the club in Edmonton. Uh, what a good fly tire he was. So I've got a little clump of that, this red uh, calf tail. 
and I'm going to put it in the stacker. Drive everybody nuts by banging it on the work surface here. Even up the tips, more or less. And I'm going to measure that to be gap length of a hook behind the bend. And I'm going to tie that down right at the back of where the mono stopped off. And then I'm going to wrap forward over top of it. And I, it's going to stop, fortunately, right where the mono stops at the front of the hook. Now the body of this fly is macrame yarn. And I've got, I've got large balls of this stuff. So I just whacked off a chunk and I pulled it apart. It's, see, it's all, it's all braided. So I pulled it apart and I've got one single fairly skinny strand here. And I'm gonna, right at the tie in point for the mono, I'm gonna tie in that strand of macrame yarn on top of the hook. And I'm gonna pull it straight back so that it's fairly flat on top of the hook. And I'm gonna wrap over top of that all the way back to the bend to where that calf tail is tied in. Now, at this point, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna make a little loop that extends out beyond the bend of the hook. You see it's a little loop and, it, and it, it curves up and over. And I'm gonna just tie that loop in right at the tie-in point where the red calf tail is. And so you can see it extends over top of, as a butt over top of where that uh, calf tail is. So that I think from underneath the idea is that that would give a red contrast against the yellow body. Now at this point, I'm gonna tie in the rib and I have a nice long saddle here. It's a Howard's Hackle one that I've had for years. And I'm gonna try and get the barbules to be uh, just about gap, gap length. So you can see that's a little bit short. So I'm gonna start a little further down here and I'm gonna strip back the barbules off the hook, the, the hackle shaft, exposing a piece of feather of stem. And I'm gonna tie this in with the uh, colored side, the heavily colored side facing away from me. And I'm gonna tie it on, on the near side of the hook on the stem, right where I've left off with the, with the uh, body material. And I'm gonna give that a couple of good wraps right at that point, because that's gonna be the start point of the hackle wraps. Snug it down. And I'm gonna pull it, pull the, pull the body material up, and I'm gonna take a couple of wraps over the stem in front. And that just locks it in so when I start to wrap the hackle, it's not gonna pull out on me. Let me trim that. At this point, I'm gonna take my thread all the way up and I'm gonna stop my thread a, not quite, a little bit more than halfway up the shank. Now this is the tricky part. What you, if you would just wrap this forward, you would get a very flat body. But what I wanna do is I wanna twist this just a little bit to tighten it up. And I'm twisting it from my perspective clockwise. I'm gonna go over the hook shank and with each one of the wraps over the hook shank, I'm gonna give it a bit of a twist. And what this does is it keeps that material tightly twisted and it creates the appearance of a bit of segmentation. I'm not twisting really tight, but just enough to give a little bit of segmentation to the body as I wrap it forward. 
And when I get to where the thread is hanging there, I'm gonna let last wrap, I'm not gonna twist because I want it to flatten out a little bit right at that point. That's where the wing is gonna get tied in and the legs. And then I'm gonna trim that off. I'll bring my thread back to so make sure I got all the loose bits tied down. And I'm gonna finish off my thread just a little bit back from where that body ended. And I'm gonna spiral this hackle forward and I'm gonna sort of try to miss every second segment here. I don't want a really uh, robust wound hackle. Don't wanna do it really tight. So I have a bit of a gap in between each wrap of hackle. So I'm gonna get about four, maybe five wraps up here. Bring it up here, wrap over top. The first one of these I tied, I wrapped it way too many wraps of hackle and uh, I almost couldn't see the yellow for the hackle. Trim that off. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie the wing on the underwing, which supports the turkey quilt wing. But to make this so it doesn't stick straight up, I need to take my scissors in here and I'm going to just trim the top of this hackle off. Um, it's going to be right down the top of the fly. I'm going to trim the hackle off. And I'm going to just get a little bit on either side so the hackle is only sticking out the sides and the bottom. And you should be able to see that now, it's fairly flat on the top and it sticks out on the sides and the bottom. Just make sure I've got them all over the way. And that's all in order to make room for the wing, the underwing. I need two kinds of deer hair to tie the remainder of this fly. This is just natural deer hair. And it's reasonably fine. It's not the really fine stuff that we use for the X caddis, but it's fairly fine. And then I've also got some yellow deer hair. So this, so from here on out, the natural colored deer hair is gonna be on top and the yellow is gonna be underneath with the exception of the wing, because we want the yellow hair to be the underwing. And that's again for color contrast up against the, the, the wing, which is a uh, model of turkey quilt. So I'm gonna take a uh, very small clump of yellow deer hair. I'm gonna take it, hold it by the tip and get all of the fuzzy stuff out. And that thins it down. I don't want a very robust underwing. You can see there's not a very big chunk of hair there. I'm gonna stick that in my slightly larger stacker. And line up the ends of that. And again, you can see this is nicely, nicely stacked. I'm gonna measure it so that the, the wing is just barely past that loop in the tail. And I'm gonna set it down on top of the hook shank. And when I set it down, I'm gonna kind of squish it so that it's thinner vertically than it is horizontally. And I'm gonna get my thread right back onto where the, the uh, body is, material is, and actually even a little on the hackle. I'm going to measure that again, make sure it's in the right spot. And I'm going to push it down and pinch it fairly snug. I'm going to bring the thread up between my fingers and pull it down the far side. And I'm not really going to crank that. I'm just going to snug it down. So you see, if I really crank that, these, the hair would flare a lot. If I do that, this wing is going to flare up, and I don't want it to flare up too far. 
So then I'm gonna come forward and I'm gonna wrap in front of the tie-in point on the butts a bit. And that's just to keep that wing from flaring up too high. I'm gonna take my scissors and trim the butts out. Once I got the butts trimmed out, I'm gonna use my thread to bind them down pretty good. And again, I don't wanna bind down really hard near the back of this. I build a little bit of a spot there where it's somewhat flat. So you see, I have a wing now that stands up, but not really high. Now, the next thing is the wing. And the wing is model turkey quill. And you try to find a, a turkey quill that doesn't have a lot of curve out here at the tips, because this turkey quill is going to be folded over to make the wing. And to make this work a little better, I actually prepared this by spraying it with a artist fixative. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna snip off, I would say one and a half gap widths of turkey quill. Like that, separate it, and there's my there's my turkey quill, and I'm going to lay it down on the hook shank, on the near side, so that I measure the turkey quill just hair past the end end of where that underwing is, and I'm holding it up. I'm going to pull the underwing down gently with my forefinger here, a little wet. And it's, it's half on this side, half on the other side. Now I'm gonna fold this over top of this segment, over top of the hair wing. So now I have this folded turkey quill over top of the hair wing, and it extends a little bit past where the end of the hair wing is. And I'm gonna cinch that down really good. There's my folded wing. I'm going to come forward and bind the butts down if I can. There we go. And I'm building a bit of a base here because this is where I'm going to tie in the legs. Now I'm going to save you the agony of preparing the legs but I'm, I'm gonna show you the general routine. The legs are made out of pheasant tail fibers. And I'm gonna select, you, typically I would select maybe half a dozen or so, six or eight fibers and pull them out at an angle to the, to the shaft of the pheasant tail. And then I've got this gizmo here wherever it went. This is a miniature latch hook tool that people use to hook rugs with. And I'm gonna lay that down across the, the fibers that I pulled out. I wrap that around the shank of the tool underneath and then bring it forward over top. And this is always the tricky part is I wanna capture these loose fibers in that latch hook. And this is always the one that drives me nuts. There we go, got them trapped. Close the latch hook and then I pull them through. And when I do that, I've got a knot in this pheasant tail. I'm gonna adjust that knot so that it's about the middle of the, the pair of them and snug it down. And I'm gonna trim a couple little fibers out of here that are kind of in the way. And then I pull that off of the main feather. And so now what I've got is I've got a fairly thick piece of pheasant fiber, pheasant tail fibers with a knot in it and the knot gives it a kink. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay that down on the side of the hook where the knot is even with the back end of the body, right where the, the tail is tied in. And the, the, the end fibers point downward and the, the rest of that leg is parallel to the body. And I'm gonna lay it down on the near side and I'm gonna give a, a couple of wraps of thread to hold that in that position. And then I've got another one of these that's already made for the other side. And I'm gonna place that on the opposite side. I got one that, this one maybe, yeah. that one's better. And I'm gonna lay that on the side of the hook the same. And I'm gonna lay it down so that it's parallel to the hook shank with the legs pointing down and out. And I'm gonna wrap those down. And then I'm gonna come in here and trim off the butt ends of those little legs. As I say, the, the most finicky part of this fly is getting these legs made with that knot and, and to tie them in so they're in the right position. And I've trimmed off those butts. Now from here on, the rest of the fly is deer hair. I'm gonna make a nice little base here where this stuff is so the deer hair will, yeah, rats. That, that thread just slipped right off of there. That's where you're, when you're working on a smaller hook shank, it's really a pain in the butt because this taper gets too hard. All right, now I got it. So I'll build a little taper here because when I tie on the deer hair, I'm gonna tie it so that it sits on this built up bit of body. What am I doing here? Yeah, my thread's not cooperating. There we go. Now we got it. I'm going to build up this base. What's happened here? Pardon me while I tighten up my bobbin. Now I want this to be in the right spot because this is where I'm going to start the deer hair right behind the wing. Okay, now it's in place. Now the wing's gonna be natural deer hair. And I'm gonna take a, a moderate chunk, not a huge chunk. I'd say about hmm, a little less than gap width. Trim it up nice and short here. Once again, I wanna get all the fuzz out of the bottom and the loose hair. And I'm gonna stack it. Now for this guy, I don't want these to be too long. I, I want them to go maybe a little shy of body length over top of the wing. So you see the colored tips are gonna be about halfway down the wing when I finish tying this on. And I'm gonna do what's called stack it. I'm not going to spin it. So I'm gonna measure that and then I, I do want the butts left around. So I'm gonna leave a section of butts in front of my tie end point that is maybe a quarter inch or a gap length long. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and set it down onto the body. And I'm gonna, again, squeeze it a little bit like I did the other hair. And I'm gonna pull down on the far side, just gently, not flare it yet. Just a little flare, then up, down the other side. And now I'm gonna pull up good and snug. And I pull down on the far side this time. 
and you'll see that the hair flares. Now, this front hair, I'm gonna take with my fingers and I'm going to leave it there a little bit flared, but I want this gap between the front and the back bits of hair to still remain until I turn the fly over. Now, now that it's upside down, I'm going to get my yellow deer hair and I'm gonna take a good size chunk, probably double the size of the one that I used for the top hair. I'm gonna cut that off the, the body. So I got a chunk. Once again, hold the tip, pull all the loose stuff out. And the pulling the loose stuff out, that allows the hair to flare. What I'm not, again, going to do with this, I am not going to spin it, I'm going to stack it. So I don't need to put it in my stacker now. I don't need the ends to be even because I'm gonna cut those tips off. So I'm gonna measure the length of it to be from the eye of the hook to just a hair shy of the length of the, of the bend. And I grab that with my left hand and I'm gonna trim these tips off fairly close to my fingers. So now I've got this chunk of deer hair that I'm gonna put the center of it down where that thread is hanging. And now I wanna wrap over top of this in that gap between the front and the back hair on the top. Again, gently down the far side, slight flare, another wrap, a little harder, and another one, and I'm gonna flare that really good. Pull nice and tight. Now that, so that yellow hair is now stacked on the bottom of the hook shank. Now to keep from trapping all these fibers that are sticking towards the front, I'm gonna use my thumb and, and finger and push it back out of the way. A little bit of moisture won't hurt that. And I've got my hair packer, which is this little guy here that has a range of holes and a handle on it. And I'm gonna pick a hole that will go over the eye of the hook. And I'm going to slide it back here and really pack all that deer hair to the back. When it's well back, I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna take my thread and wrap it in front of that, about halfway to the eye. So now you see I've managed to keep all the brown hair on top and all the yellow hair on the bottom. Now I'm gonna stack a good sized chunk of natural deer hair. So I'm gonna take another good sized chunk out of that hide. Again, remove all the loose fibers. I don't need to stack this in my hair stacker. Don't need to even the ends up because I'm gonna cut them off. So I, once again, I'm gonna hold that left hand and cut the tips off. And I got a little bit of uneven here. So now I've got one, and I'm just gonna even up the other ends a little bit. So now I have a bunch of brown deer here. And I'm gonna do the same stacking process. I'm gonna make it so that it's relatively flat and vertical. I'm gonna lay it down over the thread, up in between, fingers and gently pull down to get a slight flare. Second time through, a harder flare. And the third time through, good and snug. I still wanna keep the thread in the middle of that clump because I'm gonna come over the underside, turn the fly over. And I take another chunk of yellow deer hair.
about the same size as the first one. Get all the fuzz out so that it will stack properly when I tie it on. Again, we're not spinning this, we're gonna stack it. And I'm going to cut off the, the fancy tips. Make sure it's even on the other side a little bit. You can see that's a fairly sizable chunk of hair. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna set it in there where the thread was hanging. And again, up between, and then in between my fingers and down the far side and gently pull down to start it flaring. Once more, a bigger flare. A third time through, I'm gonna, then I'm gonna pull up nice and snug so that it doesn't rotate around the hook. And the last thing I need to do is fingers here and push it back from the eye. Get my stacker again. My packer, put that over the eye of the hook and shove it back. The reason for this packer is when you're packing really hard back to get this nice and dense, you don't want it to be your fingers that slip and hit the point of the hook because you'll impale yourself really good. Now that I got that pack back, I'm going to pull this hair all the way back out of the way behind the eye, all the way around. And I'm gonna get my thread up in here and I'm gonna wrap right immediately behind the eye. Bring it back, and then I'm gonna whip finish in here. Trying not to trap too many deer hair fibers when I do this. One more wrap with whip finish. Two, three. So now I got this fuzzy deer hair body or head. You can see that from perspective that it's yellow on the bottom and brown on the top. That's what you do with, with stacking. So now the trick is to trim this. And the first thing we do is we come in with the fly upside down parallel to the hook shank and trim it off nice and short on the underside. Get all that fuzz out of there. And then I'm gonna trim off the sides. Might have got the bottom a little tight there. Okay. Now the trick here is I want these little tipped deer hair fibers to, to not get trimmed off. So I lay my scissor down on top of them and slide my scissors down towards the rest of the package of deer hair. And I'm gonna trim the deer hair off, butts off, close. But with my scissors being laid down on top of the ones with the tips that stick out the back, I'm not gonna cut them off. Gonna come across the top. And I'm just gonna trim this up so I get a bit of a bullet head shape.
and trim some of the stuff out from behind the eye here. So from here on in, it's just a case of where do you want to stop trimming? You want a, a bit of a, a bullet head shape to this thing, flat on the bottom. And more bulbous on the top. And that'll probably do it there. So there we have a head that's yellow on the bottom and brown on the top. And it's a bullet shape. Now this one I did tend to crown the head just a little bit. But, and the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim these trailing legs of the hopper legs off a little bit shorter than where they were, about tail length. And the last thing I'm gonna do is take a little bit of head cement and I'm gonna to touch it on those trailing legs, just a, a touch like that. And I'm gonna take my fingers and glue the fibers of the trailing part of that leg together. Just squish them together. And that's him. That's Dave Whitlock's hopper. Wow. So that's an impressive piece of work. Mm -hmm. So D spotlight me. There we go. Yeah, so that, that took a, a bit of practice, you can imagine. <laughs> get trying trying to get the uh, the yellow on the bottom and the brown on the top in the stacking is the hard part. And, I'm, and sometimes I was more effective than on others. And this one, this one particularly I did last night turned out actually very well. You can see it's really quite, you know, get some more light on there. You can see it's quite yellow on the bottom and, and definitely brown on the top. And that little trick of, of leaving these ones slightly longer than the butts and being able to slide your, your scissors down them to trim off the fronts in front is what leaves that collar over top of the wing. So the whole fly now is yellow on the bottom and brown on the top, except for the underwing, which is just underneath that turkey, and it's a yellow color as well. So that's the style of fly that Mr. Whitlock ties. <laughs> it was fun uh, to tie, a lot of learning. And I tied a gazillion legs before I got them <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Now you can probably use those on other. Yeah, uh, I think so. Simpler yeah. hopper patterns if you just, yeah. because I was looking at that and I was thinking, yeah. Maybe the SA hopper could uh, could use a leg or two. Could, could use a leg or two, yeah. yeah. But then it it kind of detracts from its otherwise reasonable simplicity. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably the most complicated fly that we've tied in the last day. Here in a bit, but it's worth uh, pushing your skills every once in a while. I, I'm getting, I got better at, at stacking deer hair, I'll tell you. Yeah, that's, and doing, doing that once is one thing, but then you have to do it twice. That's, uh... yeah. <laughs> well, you're, do, you're doing it it's four times on one fly because uh, you've got the, the one color on the bottom and the other color on the top, and you've got the, the one that has the tips at the back and you're cutting the front part off. 
Mm. And the other trick with I found is is making sure that you every time you put a stack is that you compact it back and that you don't before when you do the bottom stack and then the top stack that you do those before you do the compaction. Otherwise, you end up trapping a bunch of fibers when you put the next stacking piece on. So the things you learn. Now I've got a half a dozen hoppers. I can put in my box. <laughs> there I go. So Florian, you're up on a much simpler hopper pattern. Yeah, this is uh, totally child's play after what we've just <laughs> seen. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. Well, so this is the essay hopper. And I'm going to deviate just slightly from the uh, from the stuff that uh, has been posted. So essentially, you can you can use different materials for the for the tails. You can use either deer or elk for the wing. Um, the foam is important. The hackle rib is also important. And the posted flight, if you looked at the picture carefully, had a gold wire rib which is a bit of an extra hassle. So I'm going to, to skip that. Usually the recipe doesn't call for it. Some people feel uh, compelled to, to tie one in. Okay, so this is a size 10 that I'm, I'm doing here. I've tied some eights and I'm getting myself ready to, to tie some twelves as well. So here's the hook that I'm using. You can use whatever you have that has a, you know, somewhat longer shank than a standard dry fly hook is basically what you want. Or you go to a larger size uh, standard dry fly hook, which would give you a wider gap and uh, for the same length of shank. So this one here is a TMCO 2312, which has a very pleasing uh, curve to my eye. Um, we're just comparing hooks with uh, with Michael and Dave before before tying and the, this looks very similar to the 200R, it's just a little finer wire and actually the shape of the bend is a little bit different. So if you're perfectionist enough to care about such things, uh, you, can, you can play with different, different hook shapes. Okay, the thread is a fire orange, six sought uni thread. And the original pattern calls for red deer hair for the tails. So you can use this. This is kind of, yeah, it's red, but it's a fairly muted red. In, in order to stay with the fire orange thread theme, I've discovered I have some pretty strong fluorescent red synthetic fiber that I'm just going to use a little pinch of for a tail. So this is just a, a hot spot really, just a little accent there at the back. So it's not too much. You just cut a small bit of fluff, attach it solidly here. It's always going to be perhaps just a little longer than what you what you wanted. You just cut it to about the same length as the gap of the hook, no more than that. Okay. All right, the next thing is we're going to start with the body, which is foam. And I have the foam is pre cut. So one half to two thirds of the gap of the hook, and then trim the end of the foam to a little point here, which is going to extend past the bend of the hook to about the same length as that red stuff. Now, before I do this, some people would go here and pull out their super glue. I just, I'm not very keen on having my fingers permanently stuck to the fly I'm tying. So the super glue usually doesn't come out, but I'm going to put a little drop of head cement substitute, hardest nails. Okay, now the 
one challenge in tying this flag, well, one of the challenges, there, there are several, but one of them is not to have your foam body roll around. Foam is a pretty pesky material to tie with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the foam flat against the hook shank on my side, okay? And bring the thread over and do one soft loop and then start tightening as I come back Hello. to my side. Yes? Somebody had a question? No? Okay. Then do a few more wraps, but all in the same spot to avoid twisting this thing around too much. It will inevitably twist a little bit. You can lock the body better in place by moving the foam back here and doing a couple of turns of thread right underneath the tying point, okay? So this is going to eventually set and anchor this a lot better. The next thing you want is a bit of hackle for the rib. And I'm using, this is a size 16 hackle that I'm using for the rib on a, on a size 10, 10 hook. And the reason is that the body being so thick, when you add the hackle, you don't want this, you don't want the, the barbs of this hackle to stick out too much beyond the point of the hook. And so you have to severely undersize the hackle in order to get this, this part right. So just tie it in here, two or three wraps. Again, try not to squish any more of the foam down, just whatever you already did. And then move the thread ahead to about the two thirds point on the hook or maybe 60% of the hook length, hook shank. And I'm going to give another little bit of head cement here. Just coat a little bit this thread underbody. Some of it is going to ooze out between the, between the wraps. That's going to be okay because it's also going to help better secure the rib. Okay. And now you want to wrap this, you have to be careful with several things. Don't put too much tension because that's going to start spinning the body unless you use super glue. And don't squish the foam too much because then you lose a lot of the floatability. And don't hit the point of the hook because that's going to mangle up your foam. Okay. I have to make it look complicated because after after Dave's hopper, this, this would look like it's, it's too easy, right? So I have to, to add some complexity to the tying process. So then secure this thing here. And then again, a few wraps in front before you even think about cutting it. Okay, now look around, make sure that everything is positioned where you want it to be positioned. And now you can do a few tightening up wraps right at the front of this foam so that it's very well secured to the shank. Okay. Once you've got this, then the rib goes on. And you begin by doing one full wrap at the point where you tied in the rib. Okay. This covers up any little stub end you might have and makes everything looks nicer. And then you can carefully follow. If you look at it, there, there's still visible, there's some ribbing visible from where you wrap the foam. If you just follow those in a spiral here, it's going to seat your rib very nicely. And the final effect is going to be reasonably this. Whoops. Okay, hackle tip, I guess too much tension. Here we go again. I'm reaching the, this is the, the tip portion 
of a saddle hackle. So it's reaching into the more fragile regions of this hackle. Okay. Let's see, second time luck here. Just attach it here. Three wraps to be safe. And then just trim this nice and close. Okay. Now we do a little bit of an underwing. And the underwing is just going to be some crystal flash. And this is too short. Okay, so I'm going to get some crystal flash here. Or flashaboo. But this is the crinkly, the crinkly style stuff. Um, a crystal flash is almost identical. It's just a little bit uh, thinner and more of a limp kind of material. This one is a little a little stiffer, so I thought for, for a fly this big, this might be a better choice. Okay, so I don't need an awful lot of this. So I'm just taking a small piece, I'm folding it in four, and just a little bit of an accent there, you don't wanna overdo it. Okay, and then measure here. So it goes to the end of that tail. Secure this nicely on top. It's gonna to stand up a little, but that's not a problem because we're gonna cover this with a wing shortly. So it's going to go back down to a more natural position. And see if there's any mess here that still needs cleaning. Nah, it's good enough. All right. Now some um, some hair. Oh no, the underside here. This is. I'm gonna leave this here. There are things you see on camera that you don't see otherwise. Okay. I think this is all gonna get buried underneath other stuff. So now I'm going to use a little bit of elk hair and the size and proportions of the wing are the same as on any other hair wing fly. So you would, you'd put a wing the same way you, you would on, a, on an elk hair caddis or, or similar thing. By the way, this is a very, um, very similar fly. And according to the existing published accounts of this, uh, this fly was inspired in part by the stimulator. Okay, so it is a fairly, fairly similar idea um, with a few subtle differences. The main one being the substitution of foam for the body. Okay, so here is a clump of hair. I cleaned it up. I'm going to stack this. And this is a fairly small clump in terms. I'm going to use a small stacker to, uh, I have this conical stacker here that groups the fibers very neatly together. So I grab the tips and now measure the length of my wing. Okay, so I want the, the wing to be on top of the sparkly material and just allow a little bit of that sparkle to show through. Okay. So now I'm going to start securing this hair down and fairly tight and going between my fingers with a thread and going towards the, I don't know if you can see here, but I'm going towards the eye of the hook with the hair for a few more turns, basically. So I provide a good base for finishing off the fly. Now you don't want to go too far. Don't want to crowd the eye. This is probably one turn too many. I should probably stop here. And then tighten this down so that you get a decent, it's always going to be a little bit of a taper here. 
but you want this to be as flat of a base as you can because there's still one more hackle to go. Right. Now you can trim, even if you accidentally cut the thread at this point, it doesn't matter because you've secured this, this hair down so well that it won't go anywhere. Just quick tidy up. And now we have a reasonable base for finishing off the fly. Yeah, I told you I, I did cut the thread. Okay. All right. Now the last two ingredients are a hackle. Now the hackle for the for the front of the fly. So as you can as you can see the the rear hackle, right? The rib is reaching to about the point of the hook. You want the front hackle to be just a little bit bigger than that, okay? So if you went down to a size 16 for the rib, you're gonna go down to a size 14 for the hackle. And when I say go down, it's going down relative to the size of the hook, which is officially a size 10, the hook I'm tying on, okay? So then secure the hackle right at the point where the wing emerges. and make sure that it's well attached. And then get a little bit of dubbing here. You can use, I've used on some, um, on some flies I've used um, peacock curl and it looks very nice. Uh, this is just a darker base underneath for the front hackle. That's, that's really all you want. And what the original pattern specifies is some olive dubbing and here I have some olive antron dubbing that look to me like the right color. So I'm going to dub the thread. You want a little bit of dubbing here. This is very fine stuff. So I'm just kind of put little bits at a time and then just cover up that thorax prior to Tackling it. Okay. If a little bit of orange shows through, not a problem. There's supposed to be orange in this fly. That's why you're using orange thread to begin with. Okay. So now we've got the front done and it's just a matter of wrapping the final hackle. So there we go. Make sure that there's no hair from the wing getting caught at this point. Just do several, just stroke the fibers back a little bit. Just do a, a little bit of that then everything is gonna come up a lot tidier. And three, four turns of hackle is all it takes. When you reach the front, secure this. Just make sure you leave enough room so that your head doesn't get crowded and then there's a problem with, you know, tying off the hackle and all of that. Okay. You want to do a bit of cleanup here. One little trick that I've been experimenting with is using a little piece of silicone tubing here to push everything back and out of the way so I can do a luxuriously comfortable whip finish. This is a genuine Norm Norlander trick. And the little piece of tubing I'm using is in fact a little off cut from one of these little silicone caps that you either get with your, um, they may come with some of the resins 
or you can actually buy it from Norvice. That's, uh, shipping is more expensive than this thing's cost. Okay, so two whip finishes, so there's no need for, for head cement. And cut the thread, and there is the fly. No hair stacking, no, no legs, but the idea of adding legs to this is, is tempting. And the, the sparkly fibers are just kind of in there, mixed in with the wing to just give it a little bit of, you know, illusion of motion and, and all of that. And that's the SA hopper. And supposedly you can tie this down to size 14. Um, I haven't, the next thing I'm gonna try is tying 12s. I'm not sure about 14. And six is a little, it's a little excessive. And I think the success of this fly is that it's a bit, it's a little bit like the stimulator, you know, it's a bit hopper, it's a bit stonefly, it's a bit of everything, right? 